Today we're hitting up Flux, and uh, I am doing this because this looks like a crypto that's going to go to zero, that is acting like it's something it's not, and I'm tired of y'all getting ripped off on these junk coins, and somebody needs to come out here and say, hey, this is why I think this is not a good investment. So here it is, Flux. Now, the one thing I do like about Flux, this is a smaller market cap compared to a lot of other cryptos. Some of you all have been saying this is going to be the next competition for Internet Computer Protocol as, you know, decentralized physical infrastructure. No, that's all crap based on what I'm about to show you. But this is at least a smaller market cap. So in theory, there could be more upside. But this is an older crypto also. And I'm going to show you how old it is that you can tell like this is an old blockchain. It's not as old as Bitcoin or Ethereum, but this is the technology on this is not impressive at all. And to me, investing in crypto is about investing in the technology and the team and can it do real Web3. So that's how I'm assessing this. And it is impressive that Flux had a second bull market that was bigger than its first bull market because most things don't do that. So Flux had its, its first kind of pump. It came out like at the end of the last bull market into the bear and a little pump in 2019 and then it went up to two dollars and seventy something but it's still it's it's not recovered its all-time high yet and it recently had this big pump probably off decentralized physical infrastructure and it lost most of those gains already and it, what you want to know here is though like what's really going on here so if you scroll down and look at what is flux cryptocurrency and how does it work it's a currency that's it powers the flux ecosystem and this is where the problem starts if everything, if you want to do real web three, it all needs to be fully on chain, not a currency that powers an ecosystem that's off chain. This makes it basically a payment token and uh, all the stuff's off chain then that provides value, which means the token does not have real value from the assets. We'll explain more about that in a minute. But if you look at the coin market cap listing, where it's a mineable proof of work cryptocurrency. Huh? So we're still launching mineable proof of work cryptocurrencies. We're still investing in those today besides Bitcoin. I'm not, but I don't want them. proof of work is so 2009 at this point. Then uh, you've got it says here you have a decentralized computational flux network, but that's not on the blockchain. So what proof is there to this decentralized and what value is there in having a, a quote decentralized computational network that's not on chain? I mean, I could just use Amazon Web Services and that's cheap and dump all my stuff on that. And then it has this Linux based operating system, it says, etc. Now, the network has a few thousand decentralized nodes, it says, with lots of computer cores. And it says that makes Flux the largest decentralized network in the world, but prove to me it's decentralized. Decentralization is the biggest lie in crypto with Bitcoin is not decentralized. There's a couple of mining companies that have half the hash rate. If they colluded, they could override everybody else. Ethereum has like a handful of validators of you know staking companies and pools that control half the staking. If they wanted to, they could slash everybody else and do whatever they wanted. Even Bitcoin and Ethereum don't have meaningful decentralization anymore. And Flux, you're claiming that stuff off chain is decentralized. Well, how does that contribute to the token price? If you look at the Flux Explorer, which is a little sketchy to start with because it looks like to me they probably accepted money to put a link to the Explorer on SoulScan first before even run on Flux, which is something weirds going on with that. But if you look at the run on Flux blockchain, you know, there's there's very few transactions that are even happening on the blockchain at all. And then you've got these tokens that I guess are bridged over onto other chains, which that doesn't seem like a good idea either. So then you go over to their X account and it says the world's first and largest decentralized computing network. Run anything on Flux today. Robust, scalable for the people. Deep in AI cloud and more. How, what proof is there? It's decentralized 
because there's if you go to the flux.io it's not actually on chain which means where is it hosted who controls how the network and the protocol operates well the flux decentralized let's just throw the word decentralized in everything flux decentralized team it says the team is a decentralized uh, could we not we're not allowed you have to it's like get fined you should get fined every time you use the word decentralized <laughs> The team is an organizational structure of volunteers and leaders. These, these people are volunteering. All right. Now, just off the top of your head, do you think it's going to work out as a good investment based on people volunteering? Or do you want people working full time, getting paid by the protocol to build an engineer on the protocol? I personally would like people that the protocol's business model actually supports them in getting a real paycheck and having an incentive to build on the protocol. So this, this team right now, I am proud of them for actually listing all these people on here. They've, they actually have a lot of people listed on their team, which this is even more well done in terms of the, the team page than internet, than Definity. However, let's let's look at the people. You got some with IT experience, blockchain technologies, which is good. So you, you have some, some technology people out here. But how quickly do we start to get into graphic designers, content developers, you know, media teams? A couple of developers here, which is good. But a lot of the people. A lot of the people are, there's a good amount of developers, but there's also a lot of people who don't have, you know, it doesn't look like they're actually building and making the protocol better. And the protocol is not, doesn't look like the protocol is controlled at all from the blockchain. So why would I buy the token if this whole protocol runs on stuff that the token doesn't control? I mean, are you understanding this? Like this is a proof of work mining token that anyone can mine it can't have any real physical control over anything that goes on in the ecosystem. My question is, who does have that control? Who on the decentralized team is the real power person in here? That's not obvious. And that to me is a problem. We have some problems, you know? And now look at this. They're talking about deep in AI cloud and more. Well, if you understand about AI and crypto, you might know that unless you can run AI fully on chain, where AI's operations are secured through cryptography directly on the blockchain, you might as well run AI on all these centralized servers it's already running on. Because if you can't prove how the AI was trained, if you can't have some like cryptographic security to prevent AI from being tampered with. And if you can't show all that transparently on the blockchain and host it directly on websites, then uh, you might as well run your AI on Amazon Web Services or some centralized provider because it, it's vulnerable. And the only way blockchain is going to really make a difference in AI is on something like Internet Computer where you can do actual AI on chain which you cannot do with any other blockchain. So it looks like f what Flux's marketing person or people are doing here is they're, they're keyword stuffing at this point. Like, why would you run AI on Flux? I mean, just off the top of my head, I don't see a good reason to run AI on Flux versus, say, using a chat GBT plugin. They already have this huge AI setup. And if you can't actually run it on chain, you might as well just work with some of the centralized AI that's already out there. Another little issue here, but you know, little little things like this often give you an indicator of you know people trying to do the absolute minimum to get your money and to keep the project going. Look at the the top YouTube videos. So first off, they have a link tree. Why do you have a link tree? Your D, your quote, you know, hosting. Why do you have a link tree on your X account? That's sketchy. When I mean, they do have a website. Why is there a link tree? Why isn't it a website that's actually hosted on Flux? Why is it on Link Tree? This is 
this is just cheap. I mean, I had a link tree before and I'm like, I'm not trying to look cheap. So I got, you know, I put jerrybanfield.com. I hosted it on internet computer protocol. This is actually directly on the blockchain secured through cryptography. And it turns out this is much more cost effective than using Flux. How do I know? Because I'll show you that in a minute. But look at this. I mean, they have a 2023 roadmap on their top YouTube videos. Let me look at my calendar here. As I'm filming this, it's June 14th, 2024. Does anybody want to put the 2024 roadmap on here? Maybe the 2025 roadmap on here? I mean, that that's just sloppy. It looks sloppy and cheap. I'm linking to a link tree. And if you want to do further research, click through all these. They have a Twitch account. All right, I'm curious. I just got to look at their Twitch account. Uh, I have more followers than they do on Twitch, it turns out. And there's no videos. So they're linking to an account that doesn't even do anything that I see on Twitch. So this is not being very well maintained by whoever the, you know, the marketing and chief marketing officer. Maybe someone, you know, could hit her up and be like, hey, you should update the link tree. This looks like an obvious problem. But there's more obvious problems with this. I mean, look, this Flux Core, you know, proof of useful work, benchmark leaderboard, talking about AI, you know, like, is, what? Like, what, what, this is, none of this stuff's on chain. You know, this is cool that they're trying to make this network of, like, GPUs and stuff, but this is, who has the power to run this network to get the stuff up there? And then if you look at the, the actual hosting, like you look at the web hosting, which for some reason is is taking quite a while to load, I am impressed that there's a lot of depth on Flux. So there's there's a bunch, they have a bunch of websites and a bunch of links, but I can't see who really controls all this stuff because the blockchain has no physical control over it. It, they do have some impressive stats on here, but you should see Amazon stats. Those are impressive too. And it, again, the Flux token on a proof-of-work blockchain has no, no control legally or by code over any of this stuff that's happening on Flux today. And they're talking about Web3, read, write, and own. You can't have real Web3 if the token... And the assets are separated. This is almost nobody knows this, but ICP is going to go nuts when people actually figure this out because ICP is the only place you can build real Web3. And even on ICP, it's not real Web3. Some of these apps have built stuff that's not on ICP. And that means you can't actually control everything. If it's not fully on chain, it's not real Web3. Because if you have a token that's supposed to be a DAO token, you cannot have real tokenized ownership without having all of it on the exact same infrastructure. Because then when people vote with the token, it can make changes to the actual code. And that gives you control by physical control through code. So this is talking about the next generation of the internet. But to me, this is, this is more Web 2. This is Web 2. And it's not even obvious who really owns all this. So again, you're talking about IPFS on here. That's not real Web3. That's stuff that's often hosted back on Amazon through the IPFS protocol. And now you look over, you look over at the cost of using Flux Cloud, for example. Now, this is impressive if they can deliver this cheaper than Google Cloud. Although I don't know where they're getting their costs for this. Because I used Google Cloud myself to host my website and it cost $30 a month for about the same specs that they're talking about on here. So I'm, I'm not sure what kind of bandwidth they were looking at or how they managed to price this like they did. But what I can tell you from using Google Cloud from the cost they're ho posting on here, it's cheaper on internet computer protocol. It's cheaper depending on exactly how your website's set up. So if you put 100 gigabytes on chain on internet computer protocol, that would cost $500. But that would only cost it one time. It'd depend on how often your website served it after that. But my website is almost free. 
on internet computer protocol and it's directly on chain which means i don't need wordpress updates and they're talking about you know this is like for for hosting wordpress websites you know that they're comparing this to and this is six dollars and seventy cents icp is even cheaper than that and uh, what happens though if you host your website on a two vcpu server if you go viral as i've went viral a few times it turns out your website crashes if you have some crappy two vpu server what happens your website will crash because the server will max out and then everybody will get errors you know when when you go virals i've done a few times and your website gets just stupid amounts of traffic you know on the days you go viral your website crashes if it's on one of these servers you know how i know that because it did so i moved it onto google cloud and then there you just get stuck for extra bandwidth if your website goes viral which i imagine is how they tried to calculate this but on internet computer protocol my website since the way it's set up i just put cycles on there and you just pay for the computation you actually use which is so much better of a system than these old than this this is so much better of a system because right here you're paying for two vcpus but if you don't actually use any of it you still get stuck paying the same cost on internet computer protocol my website only pays for the raw computation it actually uses do you see what a technological advance that is that is a leap forward in technology which means hosting my website on icp is absolutely cheaper the way i'm doing my website at least it's basically a link tree so there's not a lot of data on it i've gotten tens of thousands of visits to my website and I could get hundreds of thousands of visits to my website in a day and uh, it would hardly cost anything out of my cycles because it wouldn't take a lot of computation. It's secured all already. Like what ICP is doing is vastly superior to what Flux is doing in every single way that I can see. I mean, the only advantage Flux has is that it's a smaller market cap right now, whereas ICP is more than 10 times bigger. But the technology... The research on ICPs looks to be hundreds of times more advanced than Flux. Because ICP builds all this stuff on chain, it's it's got critical mass. So the way I see it, Flux, this is no real competition. It, it doesn't deserve to be mentioned in the same context as ICP at all. This could be an alternative to hosting your website on Google Cloud or something, but it is not it, it is not real web three. There's almost nothing that's actually on chain. The blockchain itself is old proof of work mining, and there's not very many transactions on it. ICP does more transactions per second, according to this, than the Explorer does. If you go to the Explorer on Flux, ICP does more transactions a second than, uh, and the, these have tiny little, little block sizes too with hard laning computation. It looks like ICP does more transactions a second than this does in hours. So there, there's not much happening on here that I see. And uh, th this to me looks like it's overvalued. Now, I'm glad they've built something that perhaps could be useful to give people an alternative to using, you know, the centralized. But this, this, this is centralized also. I don't care how many times you say the word decentralized. I can see from the way this is set up and that there's no transparency about who controls the actual protocol that puts all this stuff together and that it's not on chain. Don't tell me it's decentralized, it's absolutely centralized. So if uh, I reviewed this today because I'm live on YouTube and Twitch while I filmed this, you all asked me to talk about Flux today. So this is my opinion on Flux. This is why I don't hold any Flux. And I'm, I have a spreadsheet. Everything I review, I'm putting it on the spreadsheet and over time, we'll see how everything i review does against icp yep so far actually everything i've reviewed is up five percent against icp do i like it no but this is a long-term game we're in a marathon we're not in a sprint where where you're just trying to run a lot of these cryptos are in a sprint though they're trying to just do as much as they can get as much money off of you as possible in the fastest period of time and then that's it they're out and the project's going towards zero so if you want more Jerry Banfield, if you appreciated my critical review here of Flux, 
then uh, the best way is to thank you. We just got a new follow on Twitch, a couple of them during the stream. Follow on Twitch. That's where I do all my live streams. That's the best way to chat with me is to chat on Twitch, especially if I'm doing a gaming or music stream. The chat will often be much slower and I'll see everything you have to say. You can also subscribe. I have eight YouTube channels with all these different playlists from if you want to really get to know me, watch my autobiography, listen to some of my music, hear some of my thoughts, look at some of my book reviews, watch some of my gaming videos. And if you want to chat with me while I'm not live, the only way to do it is on Open Chat, which is hosted 100% on ICP. Do not ever engage with me in any other form besides, you know, you can like my posts on X if you want to or something. But I do not have accounts on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, deleting my Discord and LinkedIn and Telegram. I will never follow you or message you first. So please don't get ripped off by all these scams in crypto. I, I love you each. I appreciate your support and I hope this review has been helpful.